that if I were you, make one of these. Right off the bat, we'll fire up the 3D printer in order to create the parts. There are only a handful of items that need to be printed, however, after comparing the actual movie prop with what 3D models were available at the time, it was apparent that in order to be close to authentic, the printed parts needed to be quite heavily modified. I'll be honest with you. I made about four of these arc reactors and probably printed off enough to make like, oh, I don't know, five or six. Each time I would make one, I would redesign where the LEDs were placed. I would change the materials used. I would change the color of the LEDs. You get the idea. What I ended up using for all of the parts was regular PLA. Clear PLA for the crystals was set to 15% infill in the printer, and then black PLA for everything else was set to 100% infill. Any more or less, I found out that it was difficult to light up the crystals, and it was difficult to be careful enough with the thin, delicate parts as to not break them. Anyways, time to modify the parts fresh off the printer. What you see me modifying right now is the upper center and the lower center. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll just leave a link to the entire model that I used in the description below. If you have some 3D modeling software or a slicer for your printer would work too, you can check them out. These two pieces printed flat on the print bed, which for the normal enthusiast would be perfectly fine. In the actual prop though, you see that the upper center and the lower center are tiered higher on the outside and stepped then lower on the inside to give it some depth and dimension. The parts were separated into the separate rings and then all of the printed parts were sanded to a finish that I thought would resemble uh, metal castings. Next, time for some paint. I wanted the metal appearing parts to resemble freshly casted aluminum or a light colored metal. The caps, upper center, and support cage were all lightly hot glued up in place with dowels and various wood, then hit with a uh, metallic silver flavor. The newly separated lower center was hit with a metallic gold. If my memory serves me correct, I believe three coats were applied in between drying for a few hours each time. Finally, all of these parts, with the exception of the lower center, were coated with a single layer of clear matte to finish off that freshly casted look like we talked about earlier. What I ended up using was 15 white LEDs and five blue LEDs from these exact strips. Um, after trying a few different variations of the colors, but feel free to try other colors too. I tried using all blue on a previous build. Uh, let me just show you here. Yep, mm hmm, mm hmm. Here it is. It was cool, but it wasn't quite what I was going for. So, I found that it's easier to solder the crystals separate, then wire them together at the end. First, the crystal ring. I desoldered 10 LEDs from the dollar store strip, then glued each of them in the holes on the bottom of the crystal ring. And take it from me, if you want to make this easy on yourself, set a system in place for how you're placing LEDs. I placed each of the negative leads inwards and the positive leads outwards. Just make a system, like I said, for both of the crystals. Next. I took a bare copper wire and soldered each of the negative leads together and then the positive leads together in two complete separate rings, essentially wiring them in parallel to keep the voltage lower than the 5 volts that we'll be using for the USB. And oh man, the most tedious part, I think my eyes twitching even just talking about it winding the copper wire around each of the crystal ring caps. I did this multiple ways and found out that say after reactor two and a half 
the best looking method was just to buy copper wire from the store. Yes, you can strip what wire you have available, but I mean overall don't be in a hurry to do anything else for a while. Glue down the wire, or be like me, and dab a little solder at the ends of the wire to keep them together, but be careful and be precise. Test your circuits. Um, it's super easy to short circuit here. For the main crystal, I used wooden dowels to align the LED holes to the support cage when I glued them together. Five blue LEDs and four white ones were desoldered from the remaining dollar store strips, then placed every other, same as above, wire all the positive together and then wire all the negative together in the two separate circles like we did before, with uh, the bare copper wire on the outside bottom of the support cage. The LED strips came with a switch and a battery pack, so I threw a switch at the beginning of the circuit with a couple of resistors. In order to decrease the five volts that will be coming from the USB, two 10 ohm resistors were soldered in parallel side by side to decrease the resistance down to five ohms um, that I ended up calculating we would need. A spare USB male plug was scrapped from an old phone, brought out, measured, and stripped. Uh, and then it was pretty easy at that point. I just soldered the positive um, and negative ends of the USB uh, to the circuit. The positive before the resistors and the negative to a, just any negative point in the circuit. A dab of hot glue was put down anywhere there was even the possibility of a short circuit. Um, and it was also used to secure the switch in place. That means under the crystal ring where the copper wire gets wound um, and the overlapping of the bare copper wire when we were connecting the crystals together. On the front packing, there was some clear plastic that displayed the product. I cut out three small triangles out of this material that would help tear the lower center rings. Each of these triangles were glued evenly spaced vertically in the center of the crystals. Using the triangles that were just glued in place, the lower center rings were placed inside, tiered from smallest to largest. Each ring got a small dab of super glue to keep things in place. And then, uh, do you remember that sink strainer with the steel mesh that maybe you saw a flash of earlier? A circle of that was cut out and glued to the upper center's centermost ring. The upper center's, super confusing, the upper center's center ring was lowered with thin snips of tin that were carefully measured before and bent into place. After a small dab of super glue was applied to keep the rings and the tin together, the assembly of the upper center was glued to the top of the prop. Getting pretty close to the end, finally, to finish off this arc reactor, uh, three strands of copper wire that I was using earlier were twisted together using my drill. I had tried before actually using single strands of copper wire, but it's super flimsy and every, I mean, the prop is made to be handled, so it, it's really easy to bend out of place, but with three strands of copper wire, I found that it's way easier to keep things in place. Um, the one strand, way too flimsy. Two full circles of that were super glued to the top of the prop. And then I took a silver paint pen and dabbed the glue points that we had just made after they were dried to the top of the reactor. And what that does is it gives it the appearance of uh, fake solder points. Ugh, I'm gonna see if I can do this all in one take. After it's dried, you, have yourself a working arc reactor prop. I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, that being said, now that it's getting close to the end of the video, I just wanted to send out some instrumental thank yous to uh, some people who made this video possible. Number one, Ryan, my man. Thank you so much. Um, to all of those not in the know, the beginning videography was done by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ryan himself. So thank you, man. I had so much fun. We're gonna have to do it again sometime. Second thank you that I wanna make. 
Uh, you might have noticed the wonderful shave job done by my beautiful wife, Katie, um, at the beginning. I actually caught her out in the wild pretending to shave and I got it on video. Don't kill me. Uh, actually, um, how that ended up coming about was I pitched the idea to her to pretend to be Dr. Ho Yinsen. Um, and she thought it was goofy and funny and that's like right up her alley. So Katie, thank you so much. Um, I don't really know how to end a video like this. So, um, how about some bloopers? Roll it! Bloop! Cut. Oh, well. And action. <laughs> yeah, this kid. How embarrassing. Dean, Dean, Dinley, D, bloop. <laughs>